What is up everybody, welcome to uh, the Magic Online Playoffs and you may have seen this deck not long ago if you've been following my channel and the reason for that is that I'm kind of uh, learning this deck. So I think this deck is very very good, this is of course Elves with uh, the little caveat that we have access to Natural Order and this is kind of like a game changer for the archetype in my opinion and uh, I think this deck is very strong and not only that but it's also very very fun <laughs> just straight up very very fun to play extremely hard to navigate i expect to do way too many mistakes throughout this i am very much in the learning process like i do like this style of deck and i have played this style of decks in the past before but i have not played this specific deck and the amount of synergies that are going on here and how much sequencing matters uh, you know like you have queer ranger and where would symbiote priestess Titania. how do you play around hate cards how do you you know how you sequence your spells in order to like play around the counter spell or play around, play around the removal spell uh, how do you like and when uh, like it's so many so many things going on with this deck uh, and like so many value engines to grind with between color of the claw you have Maya Granger with wire with symbiote all those cards and of course you have the range hermit which you can just hard cast or natural order for we have Kamal Fist of Cross and Verdant Force as our main deck uh, tutor tutorable uh, with natural order uh, big fatty and then of course we have Nantuko Vigilante to answer artifacts and enchantments and then uh, anger, anger to like wrap things up and just make everything hasty which is very very good so lots of uh, cool things about this deck I'm very interested in just like, just getting good at playing it and uh, I don't even think that this list is great uh, there's many things that I just don't know yet right i don't know whether you know this girl of the clone the main deck should be something else i don't know whether elvis champion is even worth it in your cyber whether this should be kind of literally anything else i don't know if you want to like have access to phantom nishova and the star of the wires in the cyber i just don't know uh, anything about this deck i am just learning uh, right now so that's why i'm playing this deck so much and i have been playing this in at least three of my last four videos or something like that and it's uh Maybe a little bit because I'm obsessed with it and I think it's way too much fun. And also because uh, it's, as I'm saying, really hard to play and I want to. And the only way that I can learn how to play it is by playing it. So here we are. We're going to be playing it in the Magic Online playoffs. So we'll see how it goes. First round is going to be against Phil, known uh, The Rock Gamer. So we'll see how this deck lines up against The Rock. We'll see how things go. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you for round number one. All right. So here we go with round number one. This hand looks decent so we can go turn one elf then turn two acolyte and i guess we can't play hermit and pay for echo on th because we, we would need to pay for echo for the acolyte but if we find another one drop then we're gonna be cooking so putting most to six and turn one finhorn elves basic swamp duress that's a whiff oh we can actually play two acolytes here yeah that's sick so play an Acolyte, draw a card, play Cradle, play Second Acolyte. Ooh, baby. So my opponent does not know about these two cards. I'm going to place a bird. Definitely paying Echo here. So let's pay for that. Let's pay for the second one. I think I'm going to play Foothills. Swinging in with the Acolytes here. The thing is, do I play this Priest or not? I have a pretty healthy amount of mana as is. And if my opponent has Cabal Therapy, they're probably going to name Deranged Hermit, meaning that if I, I need to have a backup creature in case I draw Survival. How do I get punished by doing this? There's no way they're main decking Plague. So if they play Pernicious Deed, I guess the same thing is true. So yeah, I'm just going to pass a turn here. I, I, there's no need for me to play out this uh, Priest of Titania. I already have a ton of mana. So I think this is Firex in Arena. Okay. I'm gonna fetch this foothills for mountain and then just pass ship the turn back. Uh, yeah, well, once again, I'm just gonna play a land and then just I think I'm just gonna play this deranged hermit, which my opponent already knows about, and just swing. So my opponent did not have D the last turn, but now they can still. My opponent uh, correctly did not block there with the bird because if they draw, if they have land plus D, they get to clear my board here, right? Opponent has another <laughs> deranged hermit, all right? Hermit fights. So I'm definitely paying for Echo. I guess I'm waste. Oh, actually, what if I don't pay? If I don't pay, 
Because I think my opponent is going to trade Squirrels, right? Because we are far ahead and they have an Arena going now. But I kind of want to pay for Echo because of... It's awkward because the only way that I have a, to, uh, to pay for Echo is by using my Cradle. But I think that's fine. Pay for Echo, that's fine. Untap. Come on. <laughs> Very punished for paying for Echo, huh? So what I can do is just play my land and say go. I don't want to play into Pernicious Deed. And I can't cast this come out. Like, if I could, I would cast this come out, but I'm one mana off. I guess the only way I lose this game is if my opponent plays... Yeah, I... the only way I lose this game is if my opponent rips um, a deed. So I'm just not going to play into it. So I... my opponent can... probably cannot afford to pay for this Hermit. So they're just going to let it die. So now Squirrels are 2-2s. Two they do nothing? Well, that's very good. That's, pr that's pretty anticlimactic, actually. Uh, but, okay, so five, so this is eight mana, just gonna play Kamal, I just activated. Even if my opponent had found the Pernicious Deed, I don't know how good it would have been. Anyway, so we want to have access to, I think, Genesis, Elvis Champion, I do like Druid Lyrist as an answer to um, Pernicious, um, to Engineer the Plague, same is true for Natural Orders. And I think I want at least two or three naturalizes. So these are the cards that I like. And maybe even Ishoba is necessary when I'm when I'm bringing in extra natural orders. I like Color of the Claw. I'm gonna cut down on probably Multani Sacolites. Maybe a Priest. And maybe, what, a Lanowar Elf and Finhorn? Maybe a Queer Ranger and a Lanowar Elf. Maybe one Finhorn Elves too. I do like Symbiote, it just allows me to have some backup ways of winning. Uh, is Anger relevant enough, is the question. I could see myself cutting the Anger. I think Masticore is probably worth keeping in, because it just lines up very well. I I'm just trying to minimize the effect of Engineered Plague, basically. My opponent's on Arena too, which is interesting, so I guess like Naturalize is... I could cut Kamal. I could also cut the Range Hermit. Yeah, the Range Hermit seems unnecessary. But if I'm not trying to go wide with a bunch of elves, then Kamal is a little bit less exciting. I don't think I'm cutting a land. Maybe I could just cut the Abimaya Granger. Now, yeah, Granger actually is, is a, a, an elf that lives through Engineered Plague. Gonna cut one more card. I think I'm just gonna cut the Eldest Champion. Like, it's a great way to end the game, but I'm just gonna cut the Anger. That, that, very, that could very much be wrong there, but... I don't know. Maybe my opponent has like Withered Wretch or something. Oh yes. Classic hand. <laughs> uh, ship it. Uh, this is better. I'll keep this one. Gonna bottom one of the forests. Turn one treetop. My opponent kept seven, by the way. And we're going to play a uh, Korean Ranger here. So here's a big question now. Do I play into Engineered Plague or do I just play Gem My Survival? I think I'm just gonna Gem Survival here. It protects it from the rest. It plays much better around Engineered Plague, because now I can just discard my Priest. And then eventually I'm just going to have a Masticore. This is like the play that is less likely to get blown out by a Plague, because my opponent just like, they kept 7 and then they went turn 2 wall, means that they had a bunch of looks at Engineered Plague. So as is, Plague would not be particularly impactful, honestly. The rest is going to Fissile. Oh my god, I'm such a genius. So now they can't even Plague. And I feel like an idiot for signing out my anger now. Oh yes, perfect. <laughs> Drew an uncastable card. At least it's, it's a nice one to pitch to, to Phantom Ishul at least, right? So let's activate Survival, pitch in Nishova, and I'm gonna get a Wall of Roots here. And now this is going to allow me to get an activation of Survival here, probably pitching Kamal. I think I'm just gonna pitch the Priest, honestly. So I pitch Priest, yeah, I think so. I pitch Priest, and I get Squee, and then I pass the turn. At the end of my opponent's turn, I'm going to pitch Squee, and I'm going to find, you know, something else. So, so far, I have straight up blanked my opponent's Engineered Plagues. There's a Bailoff, which seems okay. So, discard Squee to Survival, and we could get Elvis Champion, which is kind of hilarious here. I could get another Wall of Roots, I could get Yabimaya Granger, I could get Wirewood Symbiote even. Symbiote seems very interesting, allowing me to protect my creatures. So I can play Symbiote, and I can play Masticore, and then I can just replay Queer Ranger if I want to. 
I feel really stupid for saying on my anger. Clearly, that's gonna be coming back uh, for for game number three. What if I play? So I can play Priest of Titania from Wall and a Land, and then and tap and have access to Tutor for Color of the Claw. So this is the highest upside play, I think. So we're gonna get back Squee. Final Land's not bad. So here's Priest, and now we're going to. Pitch Squee to Wall of Roots, and here is a color of the claw. I used my mana poorly, I had to tap, so I didn't need to expose that I'm getting color of the claw, right? That was a mistake. But I don't think that my opponent's gonna have yet, so they do play the plague, which is fine. So that's gonna kill two of my dudes. I'm gonna play, gonna play color of the claw, which is face up, and my opponent knows about it. So here are some bears. And tap, get back Squee, and the grind continues. Shout out to Wall of Roots, by the way. Now what? I need to open up my mana here. I think I get another wall. Pitch Squee to Survival. Get another Wall of Roots. Cast it. Pass the turn back. We can naturalize this on my opponent's send step, which is cool. Opponent just doing nothing? Oh, I'm taking four. So yeah, hell yeah, I'm taking four. You know it that I'm taking four. Opponent plays Dust Bowl, and now what? Another Bailoff? Yeah, that's fine. So naturalize the plague. Untap. Say yes. That's a cradle. That's a lot of mana. <laughs> Alright, cool, cool, cool. So what's the plan now? We'll just get Verdum Force. This is an outrageous amount of mana. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana. I can go with a Deranged Hermit. I can go get an Elvish Lyrist to just have it in play. Or an Antuko. I definitely want to use this cradle for whatever it is that I'm gonna do. I could also just play a Masticore. Just with a bunch of untapped mana in play. I think I'm just gonna go get Verdant Force, right? We just play Verdant Force, and like, what's my opponent gonna do about it? They could have like a Vendetta or something like that, but that's kind of about it. And this is like the one use that I'm gonna get of this guy as Cradle, right? So just gotta make sure that I'm making the most of it. And now hopefully Verdant Force is gonna start doing some work. Yeah, first order of business for my opponent is to use their entire turn to destroy my guy as Cradle. Otherwise, they are super hella dead, so that's certainly pretty good for me. And you thought that I was playing an Elves deck, huh? <laughs> well, surprise. Alright, so now we have Squee. We can go get Priest. Does that even do anything, though? I can play Kamal. This is the kind of situation where, you know, an experienced Elves player would be closing this game in, like, just seconds. But instead, um, I'm a noob, so I have no idea what I'm doing. So I think I'm going to... I definitely don't want to play the Mastic or just yet, I don't think. Uh, but I want to deploy some Elf. So, Survival, Pitch, Squee, and I think I'm going to go for Priest. Priest is the highest upside. I could start to do Yabimaya Granger things. That could certainly be interesting. So I can go get Yabimaya Granger and like just start accumulating resources. The problem is I definitely want to have... I feel like I want to have a symbiote in play before I do that. Yeah, so let's do that. So let's get a symbiote. And I'm just going to pay one. And I'm going to pitch... I think I'm going to pitch in the Kamal. And I'm going to get Priest. And now I can just protect the Priest with the Wirewood symbiote. Uh, I also... I messed up the sequencing, by the way. Should, should have been the other way around. It's going to be fine. Pass the turn. Verdant Force continues to work here. All right, so now we're... We're just going to have a bunch of mana, bunch of creatures. Squeak comes back. Here's another elf, which is just free to play. I feel like I want to pitch Genesis and start doing that. And I can get back Kamal. Let's go get Queer and Ranger. Or oh, you have a Maya Granger? No, let's just get Queer and Ranger here. Because like this is actually just free, right? Because I can just bounce a land and replay it. Here's Land of Elf. Tap for, th for four. Untap. Priest. Bouncing a basic forest. Replay forest. And I think I'm just gonna bounce the Wirewood Symbiote. Oh, I forgot that I have a Color of the Claw in play. Awesome, yeah. So I just bounce the Color of the Claw. So, float some mana. Untap Priest. Bounce Color. And now I can just pitch the Color to go with Genesis. Oh, I can just make my dudes unblockable too. That's nice too. Uh, but no, I'm just gonna get uh, Genesis. Then pitch Genesis to Survival. And we're going to... We can do some Multani Cycle-like thing, but I think I'd rather do Yabimaya Granger things. 
Is that better than just playing a Deranged Hermit? Probably not. I don't know. It's too cool to do. I have a weakness for Yavin Maya Granger. I think that the synergy with, with Symbiote is just kind of great. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just wasting like insane amounts of mana and kind of nothing really matters here. Should have probably played the Masticore last turn. I'm going to do it now. Send the turn back. Just continue going off. Does my opponent find a deed? No deed. So upkeep and now we're going to get back Kamal. And that should close it, I think. Okay, so they did find a deed. So we do have a game. My opponent's going to need to pop for three, I guess. They can just pop for two if they want. But they definitely need to pop. Because otherwise things are going to get really ugly for them really quickly. What am I supposed to save here? I'm definitely supposed to untap Priest. And I think I may be able to kill a Bayloth while I'm at this. So untap Priest. It's actually untap Priest, which adds four mana. Yeah, untap Priest, bounce a forest. This is four mana. Then float a mana from wall. Float another mana from wall. Masticor, Bailoth. Masticor, another Bailoth. Masticor, another Bailoth. And now we're gonna symbiote on top priest bouncing, I guess, Granger, because I'm not gonna be paying the echo. And just kill the Bailoth now. We have one mana floating. Which is fine. We still have Baron Force, after all, is said and done. Which probably means that we're in okay shape. So everything dies besides these two. And pass it back. I could have discarded the Granger to like go get something else, but like we're gonna have another survival next turn. So this I think this is just fine. So upkeep, we wanna make sure that the Masticor trigger is the la the first thing to go on the stack. So Genesis is probably gonna get back just a priest here. Squeak comes back, Genesis. I think I'm just gonna like ride this Masticore to victory here. Burden Force token, discard Squee, and tap another survival. And I'm just gonna play another. I'm just gonna play Priest here. I'm not gonna leave regenerate Masticore mana. I guess I should have attacked first if I was gonna do this. Because I missed on four points of damage. No, I guess that uh, if I attack with Masticore, then that, uh, that enables the tree tops to attack, so I'm not interested in that. Duress takes one of my survivals. Not that I need it, right? Like, my engine is just kind of overwhelming at this point. I have infinite charm blockers. Masticore is kind of unbeatable. So we're gonna stack them same way. Genesis, is it gonna... Yeah, it's gonna get Aquarian Ranger back now. Squeak comes back. Genesis gets back Quirin Ranger. Masticore discards Squee. Make a free 1-1. One, one. Here's Aquarian Ranger. Now Priest steps for 2. I'm gonna... And tap priest, bouncing a forest, play land. I think I just play a Bimaya Granger here. Just continue developing my mana. My opponent knows about the survival, but like this place around them, top decking another. What's his name here? Do I swing with Masticore? I definitely don't swing with Burden Force. Oh, my opponent can only activate one of these three tops. So I guess I do swing with Masticore, and I think I also swing with Burden Force. They have no mana. Yeah, I think this is fine. So they can trade Treetop plus Veiloth for this Verdant Force, but like, how do they ever come back at this point? I can untap on Regenerating Masticore. I am just ridiculously far ahead. And worst case scenario, I can just get the Verdant Force back with the Genesis. I feel like I have to press my advantage. Probably should have attacked with the Sapling tokens as well. This was a mistake. And I really played this game really poorly, and it just didn't matter. <laughs> it just did not matter at all. Also, my opponent does not get to game four, by the way, which is nice. Now they have no blocking to be to, to do. They top deck deed. Oh, Bailoth. Yeah, that's fine. It just doesn't do anything. All right, so Masticore, Squee. You can pay Echo. Sure, and Genesis, I guess, is going to get back a Wirewood Symbiote this time. So pay Echo. Genesis, get back Symbiote. Like, I, my engines are just kind of ridiculous at this point, right? Like, there's nothing my opponent can do. Sure, I can Natural Order for what, the Range Hermit? Don't even care about doing that. Uh, so here's the same build, which is basically free to play. And then swing with Masty. So Masty Gore gets through second main. We can do some more fun stuff. I can replay Granger, which seems, I guess, reasonable. It also seems reasonable to just play Survival. I'm just going to keep this engine going. Like, I, I I cannot think of how my opponent gets back into this game. 
it would definitely take a lot for that to happen. I forget to regenerate my Masticore and, you know, stuff like that would need to happen. I guess it would it would need to start with specifically Withered Wretch. So if my opponent starts with Withered Wretch, maybe that can get me. As long as I'm not an idiot, basically, I should be fine. So is it time to get back Kamal? Uh, I can just hard cast this Verdant Force again. Leaving 1-2? Ah, Korean Ranger is just more. I think Korean Ranger is straight up Nets mana right here. Peach Squee. Although our hand is like double natural order and survival, and it's just like, why bother? <laughs> We're like, yeah, that's fine. We could do that if we wanted to, but this is just better. Pay 3 to Granger. This is fun. Something that does not get said enough about this deck is that it's very, very fun. Uh, do we have lethal? I think we do. I think I just missed lethal, actually. Um, so I'm supposed to attack with everything, and then I just kill the treetop. Because I have double, double uh, Korean Ranger. Yeah, this is fine. So we swing with everything. Opponent activates treetop. This is just a lethal attack. I mean, it forces them to sack the bail off, I guess, right? But at that point, this is just it just doesn't matter anymore, right? So Korean Ranger and tap Priest. Opponent gains four. It's fine. So now they take one, two, three, four, five, down to three, which is cool. So do I play survival? Survival plays into what? Deed? Do I even want to do that? I definitely want to use the symbiote. So I think I'm just wasting the mana here, but I think that's fine. Because I definitely do not want to have to bounce this on end step. Because if my opponent does have deed, then I can just bounce. I can save my priest as well. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, this this elves deck is it's been very very impressive. I am a believer. Like I, I played like garbage this entire game, and it just did not matter. I was just so outrageously far ahead. I was very impressive. It, it's very very good. <laughs> it's very good. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is actually an interesting hand. So we can go turn one elf, then turn two. We have access to three mana. Queen of Ranger, Land of War Elf. I think we could, this is a turn three the Ranger Hermit, if I'm not mistaken, which I don't think I am. So that's cool. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this. Definitely, of course, would like to draw something. You know, if I draw something like a survival or if I draw a cradle or whatever, like that's probably gonna lock things up, but excuse me, what? Ruins of Trocair. Okay, that is a card. Well, here goes my little Lena World. Am I playing against Valencian Tings? Because I can't imagine I can ever beat that deck, right? <laughs> can't ever beat that deck? I don't think so. Literally never seen this card before. Okay. Yeah, that's very scary. Okay, so that's a forest. So now I can go... I really want to play the other Lana World. So I think I'm just going to go Lana World Elf, Creon Ranger, where would Symbiote here. This allows me to develop my mana, allows me to potentially save some creatures. I guess what I could do is I could play Multani Sacolite here. Nah, I'm just going to play Werewolf Symbiote. If my opponent plays a Balancing Tings, at least I get to... Uh, a, a Balancing Act, at least I get to like make them discard some cards or whatever. But this allows me to save at least one Forest and one uh, Lana World. So it means that I'm not like super crazy dead. Yeah, this is definitely Balancing Tings. Orim's Chant. Target player can't cast spells, and if this spell was kicked, creature can't attack. But the spell was not kicked. <laughs> we did draw the survival. So I'm definitely swinging. What I do wonder, however, is I think I'm gonna be I'm gonna be swinging with, swinging with everybody, and then because I think my opponent's just setting up that. Although I guess they're gonna make me this card all my lands anyway. So I'm trying to think whether I sh I'm supposed to just bounce one of these and bounce one of my forests so I can keep it in hand. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna ship the turn back. Having survival in play is gonna be nice. I do think this is probably a matchup where Tanglewire is gonna be playing a pretty big role in both cyborg games. All right, opponent continues to develop their game plan over there. Pass the turn back. No sick on the Rims Chan, that's good. So we get to play survival here. Then we're going to Untap land or elf, bounce a land. And I think I'm gonna be activating survival, pitching burden force. And we have color of the claw, which is nice. So I probably want to keep that in the in my back pocket, huh? So we can discard anger. I guess that we can just play 
No, but that's going to use up all my mana. If I go for the Abimaya Granger line, that's going to use up all my mana. I think I'm going to go for Priest here. Priest is going to put a lot of pressure on my opponent. So play second land and just play Priest. Right here, I think I don't attack with the Llanowar Elf. Because if I don't attack with Llanowar Elf, that means that I can just um, make one mana to activate and then I can just untap two Elves. And that's going to give me enough mana so that I can actually cast the Color of the Claw. And I think I should be able to set up lethal next turn, thanks to this Priest of Titania. Definitely haven't done the math, but pretty sure that I'm going to be able to set this up. So, survival, discarding Multanisacolite, and get Anger, untap. Please don't have Orim's Chant. No Orim's Chant is good, so... Priest, to make some mana. Survival, pitching Anger, get Yabimaya Granger, play Granger, go get a Mountain. So now everybody's hasty. We're gonna float a mana and tap Priest, Bounce Forest, uh, make six mana, play another land, cast the range Hermit, make some dudes, untap Priest, Bounce the range Hermit, makes even more mana, recast Hermit, put an Impulses in response. They're looking for specifically Orange Chant here because I, they lose otherwise, so yep. All right, cool, cool, cool. Got there. Um, so we're playing against the combo deck Balancing Tanks. And I think that I do like Tango Wire, as I was saying earlier. Octavio Rangutan, like all of these cards are kind of interesting. The way this deck works is it like sacrifices all of its lands and then it plays stuff like uh, Lion's Eye Diamond and whatnot so that it can actually um, balance you for everything. So um, I'm trying to think what I care about and what I don't care about. Nasty Core, for example, feels pretty medium. I'm not sure what I'm going to be naturalizing, honestly. Maybe it matters. I think I do want Genesis as a way to recoup after Resolve Balance. I think we can probably cut the Natural Order package. Verna Forest or Nishoba are not going to do it. I think Octavi is interesting as a tutorable way to... Uh, Color of the Claw seems incredible. So uh, Octavi seems like a, like an interesting way to just destroy an LED, but my opponent's probably going to sandbag the LED until the turn when they're going off. So I don't think that's going to help that much. Druid Lyrist, I don't know what, I'm, what I would be destroying. Same thing with Octavi. Elvis Champion is a way to speed up closing the game. I don't like Masticore, so we can probably cut Masticore there. This looks fine. We have mana. I don't love Acolyte. Maybe I can cut Acolyte as champion, champion being basically a way to shorten the clock. No more, no less. But I'm honestly not sure what else to play. Because I'm not afraid of anything. Not afraid of anything like Engineered Plague. Maybe they have something like Humility, though I doubt it. Yeah, without knowing what my opponent's up to, I think I'd rather have this. The Wall of Roots are kind of weird when I don't have, uh, you know, the natural order package, but I do think that I still rather have more mana. This is, by the way, um, Damien, who won the South American champs with the deck that I'm playing. So <laughs> I'm literally playing a deck inspired by the, the list that he won the South American champs with. So I think I like this hand. Uh, we definitely need a payoff here, but we do have the the initial moving pieces of what we're looking for here. Double Tango War seems very, very strong. It's going to buy us a pretty significant amount of time. I don't think I slam it on turn two, though. Like, I could if I wanted to, but I don't think I want to. Unless something very specific happens. We'll see. Okay, that's not a great draw. Best thing to draw would be a survival. I feel like if we draw survival, we're going to really be in good shape. Okay, quiet speculation. So they can sack this to other one mana of any color. They got Roar of the Worm times two and Deep Analysis. Yeah, I don't think I care about that. So I think I'm just going to play a wall and play Wirewood Symbiote and then ship the turn back. I guess I'm just going to play everything out, actually. If I do find a survival, I can just bounce one of my creatures to, to start over. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have played the wall, but I could have played Tangle Wire there if I wanted to, but I just don't think that I do. I am going to play one of them next turn, however. Flashing back deep analysis. Okay, can work with this. Playing a land. Priest is interesting. So they have a virtual five mana as is. 
I definitely swing with everything. The question is whether do I do anything else? I can just play the priest and maybe bounce one of these fin harnels, but I kind of want to have a clock going though. I think I'm just gonna play everything. So I'm just gonna go play Tangle Wire, play play priest. Because I just wanna have more stuff in play. So I can tap to the wire and then also I can clock if I need to. The fact that I have second tangle wire also gives me a little bit of breathing room. Also, shout out to Wall of Roots being the perfect creature, the, the perfect card to tap to to tangle wire here. So this wire should give us a decent amount of time. And then I'm going to like spend one more. I'm not going to play wire for the next turn. And then I'm going to play the wire the following turn, I think. And still, if we do find, if we do find what's his name, we should be good here. So... We definitely want the fading counter to go onto the stack first, so we have to tap one less permanent. And now we're gonna tap Wall of Roots, Tangle Wire, and a land. Draw Queer and Ranger, which is not great. So this, but it actually shortens the clock by one, so I'm gonna play it out. This is a mopey game. <laughs> this is a really mopey game, but I do have a two turn clock here. So my opponent's gonna be forced into untapping, they're gonna have to tap three things which means that they can't cast with the information that we have so they could have something like lotus petal to give them the second white mana for balancing act but so they tap their stuff there then we get a swing for 10 a swing for five sorry and then another swing for 10 on the following turn so once again make sure the feeding happens first and tap wall and tap tangled wire good 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 uh well yeah Here's a swing with everything. Opponent down to five. Unless they have a bounce spell or something. There we go. Tap a bunch of mana. And here's the second tower. Let's see what they got. So that means they're going to have to tap all of their mana on their upkeep. And then we're going to have six power in play, which is enough <laughs> to kill them. Thank you, Deep Analysis. <laughs> if, it weren't, if it weren't for the three life of the Deep Analysis, we would not have been able to race here. Chain of Vapor bouncing Tangle Wire is huge. Yeah, that's a that's a big that's a big play right there. So I think now my opponent may be able to turn this around. Actually, oh I I misclicked there. I I was supposed to probably like bounce my priest or bounce one of my creatures, and I was definitely supposed to bounce one of my forests there. So now they only need to tap two lands, meaning they're going to be able to balance enact, and I'm only going to be able to save one of my creatures and one of my lands, so that, that was a mistake. I, I was supposed to, on my end, step in uh, after the Chain of Vapor has resolved, I was supposed to, to balance one of my creatures and one of my lands, I think. So now they're gonna be able to cast the Balancing Act. Oh, actually, they're gonna, they're gonna be stuck with two lands that they can't sacrifice, which means that I'm gonna get to save my lands, but I should have still saved one of my creatures. Red mana, bunch of mana, Lion's Eye Diamond, Burning Wish, Trigger on the stack. Okay, so I guess we're not gonna be able to save anything. Yeah, I think we're just dead now. That, cha that chain of vapor was huge. So here's the balancing act. And now they have zero cards in hand. So we're both just gonna be top decking here. And I'm gonna choose... Oh, I get to choose permanence. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so I get to choose any permanent. I don't just have to choose. It's not like actual balance. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I get to choose any permanent at all. So I guess I'm gonna choose Priest and Llanowar Elf. That means I have access to three mana. Yeah, so let's keep Priest and Llanowar Elf. So we have no cards in hand, but we my opponent can't really attack either. So we're gonna swing for one and play another one one, I think. Maybe I was supposed to swing for two and just hold, hold a dude, but like they can't race me here. Like, that's, that's huge, actually. The fact that Balancing Act allows me to keep any permanent as opposed to forcing me to give exactly the permanence that my opponent has, that's a really big deal. So now I have a lot more mana than my opponent, and eventually, yeah, I'm just going to draw enough 1-1s one -ones that I can just swing. Okay, so if I attack here, they block they block the Priest. They No, they only take 1, so that's no doesn't work here. But then I can attack next turn, opponent goes down to 1, and then I just swing following turn. So unless something very weird happens, we should win this. Funny, here's a land. So swing with everything, opponent's gonna block the priest. Go down one, block, 
And then, do you have an opponent? Do you have a way to make a bunch of mana and answer all my stuff? No, they don't. All right, cool. So we go on to the semifinals. Let's go. All right, folks, here we are for round number three. And I'm sorry about the difference in quality right now, but I had to leave to go to Argentina for my cousin's wedding. And here we are. Am I keeping this hand? So this hand has a pretty large burst of mana, but it doesn't really do anything. This is a lot of mana though. I think I'm gonna keep this. I don't know what I'm playing against. I do think this is probably a keep. So we're gonna lead on Lana or Elf here, and then we'll see what we're up against. Basic Island. Another Wall of Roots, not quite what the Doctor ordered, but here what we do get to do is we do get to play a Symbiote and then a Priest of Titania. So this means that we're gonna have like insane amounts of mana next turn, and if my opponent is playing a control deck, which they very well may be, which looks like they actually are, uh, then we still get to we still get to play like we still get to protect our creatures here, which is nice. Here we get to swing for three, and I think I'm gonna play out this Brian Ranger, and it nets me even more mana for next turn. Opponent fetches on my end step. I imagine they're gonna plow my werewolf simulants. Okay, so impulse. So as is, we do have a four turn clock, which is not nothing. I do suspect that there's gonna be a wrath. Double blue means that now counterspell is an option, and now they pass the turn back. Okay, so I'm just gonna swing here. They don't have a creature land, which is good for me. Multani Sacolite is a pretty good draw. Let's go to combat, and I'm going to swing with everything. Opponent is gonna take four, and now I think I just tap Cradle to play Acolyte. If my opponent counters it, it's kind of fine, and if they don't counter it, then they're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Source to Plowshares, the Symbiote in response. Do want to bounce something? I think I do want to bounce the priest. Actually, let's let's do this properly. So I do want to untap priest by bouncing the forest because this is just free to do. So we're going to untap priest by bouncing the forest. I have not played my land drop just yet, and this means I do get to untap now the priest by bouncing the Korean ranger. So this should actually allow me to create a pretty substantial boost of mana in case I draw something very good here. So we'll see what we find. Another priest doesn't really do anything. So let's just replay my land. Man, like having drawn like double wall, <laughs> we drew so much mana and just nothing to do with it. But we are kind of in a situation where my opponent does need to wrath. This is, what, four power swing in next turn? I think this is fine to just pass the turn back because if, if I do draw something, then chances are that I'm going to be able to do something powerful here. So my, if they do have the wrath, they kind of have to tap out for it here. Yeah, there we go. There we see it. Opponent taps out. We untap. And now we have... What's the best way to sequence this? I definitely want to play the Acolyte. So we can go Creon Ranger into Priest. And then I can just use the Cradle. So, Wall of Roots. Yeah, so we're going to go play Wall of Root first. Then Wall of Roots make a mana and play Korean Ranger. Then Korean Ranger, whatever, untap, replay my land, and now I think I just play Multani Sacolite here. I could play Priest. I guess I can play Wall and Priest. That's probably better. So let's do Wall and Priest, or I can just play Acolyte here. Yeah, let's actually play Acolyte because it just replaces itself. Natural Order is a fine draw here. We'll see what my opponent does. Maybe they have another Wrath. And obviously they could have something like Humility, which I probably can't beat game one. Okay, they just have the second Wrath, which is fine. Makes me, you know, happy that I held on to this Priest over here. So let's go play Priest of Titania and play Finhorn Elves, pass the turn. So that's it. Both of my opponent's Wrath of Gods are gone. Parallax Tide, well, that's potentially a problem. Do make a bunch of mana. This is one, two, three, four mana. I think I just do it. So let's fetch... And I'm gonna play a basic for get a basic forest, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna natural order here. And if my opponent does have the mana leak or the counter spell, that that's it. But I do think that we're pretty low on resources here, so I think it's probably good to just kind of go all in. Okay, it worked. So I definitely want Verdant Force here. Verdant Force is most likely my best chance at victory. They, obviously they can have a source to plowshares and that would be quite bad for me, but obviously Verdant Force, considering there's, you know, I have no mana, <laughs> this is probably the best thing that could happen here. If they do have Stifle, obviously that's terrible. I really doubt that they have another Wrath of God. Okay, we untap with Verdant Force, that is huge. And we're just going to swing with the guys. 
So my opponent's gonna cycle here, most likely. Yeah, they cycle decree, that's fine. They're just gonna buy my opponent just some turns. But we're gonna be trading some 1-1s, one and they're gonna chump the 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, they just chump, they don't trade? Interesting. So what are they saving? So they're gonna kind of wish for Stifle to leave me without lands, but that just doesn't matter. Yeah, like whatever, I don't have lands. You still need to beat my Verdun Force. I guess my opponent's just like, trying to like save as much to buy as much time as they can. But if they don't have the source to plowshares, I do like my chances here. Force continues going at it. Yeah, I'm gonna play right now this Priest of Titania because if my opponent wants to mana leak, then that means they can activate factory, so. So now we're back on having a bunch of mana. So the whole Parallax Tithe didn't really do anything. Now they get to profitably block a Shrapling. They're still taking two. We're still gonna be making two more Saplings next turn. And at this point, I guess they can cycle another degree and buy a bunch of time again. Main deck Foth. Okay, so we're just gonna leave the Humility here. Uh, humility versus everything else. This is fine. And that means that they have only one blocker for this turn. It's actually better for me that we had that they found Humility instead of Source to Plowshares. But they probably still need to keep the Humility here because they're just dying to this Verdun Force regardless. And if they humility, then I just swing with everybody, just like my 1-1s one against my opponent's 1-1s. One they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, 6, down to 1. My opponent definitely in, a little, in quite, a, quite a bit of a pickle here. Okay, so they decide to just go with the, all the cards. Okay, so Word of Force continues ticking. We have infinite mana, and we're just gonna swing with everybody because life total is the only thing that matters here. My opponent is going to block the priest and chomp the Verdun Force once again. I'm going to play with the Gaia's Cradle, even though I know my opponent has a Dust Bowl in hand, because I don't think that... I mean, if they want to tap out for Dust Bowl, then that's great for me. So now they're down to two, and even if they can cycle the Kree, that should not be enough. Yep, all right, we got there. We got there. So post-board, what cards do I like? I definitely do not like Natural Order, so we're going to get rid of that. Definitely do like Genesis. So Verdun Force, get out of here. Funny how, uh, <laughs> in, in theory, this uh, like this this whole Natural Order thing sucks, but it actually worked out great there. I do want at least two or three Naturalizes. Color of the Claws, great. I think I do want Tangled Wires in this matchup. I don't think I care for Elvis Champion. Don't think I care for Druid Lyrist. If I know that my opponent is playing Curse Totem, if I know that they are on Curse Totem, I'm gonna be a lot more excited about about playing um, the fourth Naturalize. But it, since I'm only really scared of Humility, I think I'm just going to just have three because I don't want to have my hand clogged with a bunch of answers to cards that maybe my opponents don't even have in play. Nasty is probably decent, actually. It's a single threat that can take over the game, and like it doesn't matter how much they cycle, the, we, we just blow them out eventually. Obviously, Survival is my best card. Acolyte plus Symbiote is a great combo. I do like my mana creatures. What else, what else, what else? I do have to think about the fact that I'm on the draw. Is Kamal even good enough? It's probably fine as a way to close the game. I do wonder if this is what the game is about, though. Also, I do need to make sure that I have a good enough amount of just cards that do stuff, right? Like, st um, just cards that eventually kill my opponent as opposed to a bunch of random 1-1s. One I could cut maybe, like, one Fin Horn, one Virion, something like that. Just cut a, cut a couple of 1-1s. One I do want Granger. Yeah, I do like all of my other cards. So I think we're gonna go with that. That's one of the things that I, I'm not too familiar still with this deck is, you know, how many mana creatures can you really afford to cut and still have a somewhat functional deck? Like, for example, this hand, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to keep because it kind of doesn't do anything, right? I mean, it just doesn't cast anything, I should say. Uh, so definitely Mulligan. This one literally doesn't cast anything. <laughs> Opponent moves to six, we're gonna go to five. And this is the best hand we've seen so far. Okay, cool. So keep this, we're gonna bottom anger and we're gonna probably bottom naturalize. All right, let's keep this. There's another naturalize, which obviously doesn't do too much, but here's a, here's an elf, pass the turn. Hey, they have swords to plowshares, this is brutal. So now I just cannot cast spells <laughs> unless I find another land, brutal. I am going to play out this land uh, because unfortunately there's not too much I can do about it, right? Like I just have to uh, to make sure that I can hit my land drops. Uh, yep, I mean this is something that can happen. Maybe I should be cutting one of these Priests of Titania for, 
for something else, should be cutting it for another one drop. Definitely on the play, I'm gonna be a lot more excited about having more one drops. Opponent just wishes for factor fiction. Main face simple. So I guess we're looking for land drops over there. And they did find it. That's not a land. So at this point, I'm more just trying to learn about my opponent's deck than anything else, because I'm not going to be able to do too much here. I am going to go get a forest here, even though I do, you know, I do technically have survival in hand, but do you imagine this is just going to get mana leaked or whatever? It's going to get com countered or killed in some, any way, shape or form. Uh, but I do think it's important there to play a threat, because my opponent was missing land drops, and by playing a threat, I know that they have a fourth in hand because they revealed it to the Cunning Wish. And if I do that, then that means that they cannot counter, they cannot cast Factor Fiction, right? I'm very surprised that they just attacked there. Yeah, so now they kind of have to counter this Wirewood Symbiote, which means that that's one less counter spell that can hit my Priest, which is good. So as long as they continue missing land drops, maybe we are in okay shape. All right, just main phase off. So stand still and Mana League versus lands. This is the split. The reason being because my opponent is very clearly looking for a land, right? They could have fought last turn. Maybe they're just playing me and they just they sandbag the land and they just main phase the, the factor fiction last turn. But, so if they take the lands, at least they don't have spells. Particularly this mana leak is, is threatening. So they do take the lands. There's Flooded Strand and they already had another... a oh, white, white? Seal of Cleansing. Oh, that's that's fine. That's whatever. Okay, so now we can go Queer and Ranger, then play... Priest, then bounce a forest, and then oh, I should have, I should have done that the other way around, right? I would have been able. Oh, I, I I messed up my sequences. I should have done this before, and I would have been able to naturalize the seal of cleansing right now. Whoops! All right, so I, I messed that up. I effectively threw away two mana. So there's the wrath. At this point, obviously, my opponent had multiple wraths in hand, right? So yeah, pretty big punt there. So it doesn't look like they have more business, which is good for me. So here's the Finhorn Elves. I think I just pass the turn back. And I'm just going to naturalize the Seal of Cleansing on my opponent's end step, I think. Okay, so they just played all of the lands that I knew about. So they just have three unknowns in hand. They're tapping a bunch of mana, casting the Kree for two. That's a two turn clock, which is quite threatening if you ask me. But we do get to on top with our survival. So that is pretty decent. So here's survival. We're going to activate survival. Pitching Masticore. Yep, Pitching Masticore. And I guess we get Squee. And then we activate, I guess, on my opponent's end step. Man, if, if only I had a second creature, right? Because if I had a second creature, I can do so much more this turn. I can just go ahead and just... I could have just played another Equian Ranger, which puts another creature in play. It gives me one more creature for Gaia's Cradle, right? It starts doing so much work. Powder Keg is good to know about, but it's not going to be relevant this game because I'm just dead to... <laughs> I'm just dead to everything else. So I guess I, I should just get... Ang no, I guess I should get um, Quillian Ranger here. And I need to top deck what? I need to top deck a mountain or a fetch land, I guess. Here we untap. Man, we, we were actually pretty cl close to being able to close this game out, which is crazy to think about. My opponent is going to win the game with like exactly one card left in hand, even though I moved into five and I just didn't hit my land drop for eight turns or something. Yeah, there, there's no combination. I just don't have enough stuff to do. Like I can play a Queen Ranger here. This can get Man League. This can get a million different things. It doesn't, but I don't think that really changes anything because I can't haste here. I just don't have enough stuff to do. I do wonder if... Yeah, it, it, this definitely had to do with the turn where I just missequenced my lands because I would have been able to like naturalize. And instead of that, I was able to like spend a turn uh, to play the survival, which means that I was not able to activate the survival. Yeah, definitely ended up costing me big. So I'm going to make that switch there, uh, cutting a priest for another Finhorn Elves, and I think I'm going to send this back. I could bring in Druid Lyrist, but the thing is, like, the biggest uh, problem for me is actual humility. I could have Octavio Orangutan for uh, for the uh, the Powder Keg that I, I do know about now. But I think Nantuko Vigilante is fine, since I'm only really trying to answer that card specifically. Because I'm definitely not trying to answer Seal of Cleansing. Like, that, that card I can just play through. Alright, game number three for all the marbles. Yes, keep this hand. Certainly keep this hand. All right, turn one. Here's the Finhorn Elves. Wheels of the Genesis here. This hand is insane. Apply my Finhorn Elves on turn one. Yep. So that slows me down, but it doesn't kill me. 
The question now is do I play Finhorn Elves or do I play Survival? Because if I play Survival, I play around Mana Leak, but I get owned by Seal of Cleansing. So I think I'm going to go for Finhorn Elves instead, pass the turn back, and now we'll see what my opponent does. Okay, that's, that's a pretty good draw. So now we do get to, I guess, play out a Survival. Although my opponent can just have both, right? If they do have both, obviously I get destroyed. So here's a Cradle, and I'm going to Survival Pitch Genesis for a Squee, and then Survival Pitch Squee to get probably an Anger. Anger gets my engine going, which is, which is good. Yeah, let's get an Anger for now and then pass the turn back. This is also good because it means that my opponent does not have a naturalized effect. Otherwise, it would have been obviously great for them to use the naturalized effect immediately. Mishra's Factory is good because that's not counterspell mana. So here we're just going to get back Squee, not activate Genesis. Tanglewire is a pretty great draw. So let's play a land, Survival, Pichin, Squee. I think I'm going to get Queer and Ranger first. I could do something like get Acolyte just to develop my board a little bit, but I definitely want to be playing Tangled Wire this turn. Yeah, so let's just get Queer and Ranger. It's just something else that I can put on the board. Now I can untap this Finhorn if I want. So two mana, play Tangled Wire, and that resolved. All right, that is great. So this means that we're going to time walk my opponent here, and then I'm going to be able to just haste all of my stuff without having to worry about Wrath. Oh, that's huge. Wow. I'm personally not a fan of Wasteland over Dust Bowl here, but obviously in this specific scenario, <laughs> it is significantly better, I'll say. So Tangle Wire, tap happens last, then Genesis targets something, whatever, Squee comes back. Okay, so get back that, going to not activate Genesis and Tangle Wire one. That is pretty good. Okay, so what now? So we spend one, two, three to play Yavimaya Granger. This gets a mountain. And then we have one more mana, which means I get, an, I get a squee activation, which is great. So yeah, get a mountain and tap Finhorn Elves, bounce forest. Oh, I just get to play priest here. Oh, this is great. So two mana, play priest. Now we make four mana. Woof. All right, four mana, survival, peach squee. We can get symbiote, play symbiote. That is down to two mana. Then we bounce the Granger, and that is we discard the Granger, and then we go down to four mana, so I can get Masticor, which would swing for four. Is that good enough? Seems decent at least. So let's play Symbiote, activate Symbiote, untap Priest, bounce Granger. So whatever I bounce, I'm going to discard. So maybe I just discard the Queen Ranger instead of the Yavimaya Granger. This means I get to tap Priest for three mana up to five. Pitch one card, and I guess you have him. Uh, yeah, Masticor is just what kills my opponent's quickest. Alternatively, I can just like recast the Granger and then just bounce it next turn. I can just replay it and then just use this on end step, I think. Masticor does help me clock, so I would be swinging for five this turn. I can just go for Mutani Sacolite though. Yeah, let's actually go for Mutani Sacolite. So on tap here, float three up to five, survival. Peach Granger, get Acolyte, re play Acolyte, draw a card, <laughs> draw another Acolyte. Yeah, sounds good. All right, replay that one, redraw again. Okay, perfect. So we do get to swing for five here, and I do get to bounce the Acolyte, and now pass the turn back. This is looking pretty good here. I can even discard this Werewolf Symbiot if I want to, but I think this game's just locked up. My opponent missed a land drop. Uh, this this Tangled Wire has been doing some pretty serious work. So they found a land drop, but they missed a land drop last turn which means that they found the land drop off the top here and they didn't have a source of plushers to cast on my upkeep. So I, I know for a fact that my opponent does not have a source of plushers here. So we're going to untap. And I think we activate survival here. Pitching Acolyte. We can, we can just like trim the fat from my deck here if I want to. I could cast Color of the Claw, which is hilarious. Just like a random 2-2. So just a random two that I don't need to pay upkeep for, right? That's that's the big thing here. Sure. Let's actually do that, because that represents more mana. So play Color of the Claw, get nothing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Untap, we're going to stack all of my triggers. Uh, Genesis back, whatever. And I think we do pay for the Acolyte upkeep. I do think we're just going to get to close the game here. So pay the upkeep for two, say yes, get back Squee, and Tangle Wire, tap Tangle Wire, and tap the Korean Ranger, and say okay. 
And we just have, yeah, we just have infinite mana here. So let's just play the Aquarium Ranger, which is free. Tap Priest for infinite mana. Uh, and tap Priest with Aquarium Ranger. Bounce. Replay my land. Then activate Priest for a gazillion mana, which is a real amount. I'm just going to survival for Kamal. Just end the game right now. I don't need to. No need to keep this going here. Uh, play Symbiote and activate Kamal and have way more than lethal. All right, baby. Looks like we got there. Cash flow minus 18. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, another good showing for Tanglewire. This card has been has been overperforming in this out of the sideboard. So good stuff. See you in the finals. I think we're in the finals now. Awesome. All right, baby, on to the finals. And this hand is an absolute delight. <laughs> Oh man, this hand is so close. I think I would keep this if these were a basic forest. I do wonder if I would keep this if these were a basic forest. Kind of interesting. Uh, but obviously Asses, I'm not going to, so... This one is better. Question now is what do I keep? I think... Do I keep the extra wooded foothills or do I keep the anger? Because anger makes survival into a better draw. I could also just... Just mulligan this? I guess I have enough green mana, so I'm just gonna keep this and I'm just gonna bottom the wooded foothills. Um, so turn one, Lenoir Elf, turn two, Symbiote Priest. That's where we're at. Here's a Lenoir, pass the turn back. No idea what Paul Master is up to over there, so we'll figure out soon enough. It's a good draw. That is most certainly a good draw. So we're gonna lead on Symbiote and then we're gonna play Priest and ship the turn back. Basic planes. Okay, so this could potentially be a problem if we are playing against a non-Terravore variant. We may be able to just kind of race a Terravore variant. So, we play the Range Hermit. One, two, three, four, five. Play the Range Hermit. Bounce it. But if we are playing against a Shard Phoenix, obviously we're just going to lose. I think because I have the Hermit and this can kind of kill my opponent out of nowhere, I'm going to just do some bouncing with Multani's Acolyte and I'm just going to draw a couple of cards because I may, I may find a survival. So let's untap Priest, Bouncing Acolyte. I can still play the Hermit if I wanted to and also play the Finhorn Elves. I think I'm actually just going to play the Acolyte. Then I have three, four, five men. I guess I can technically play both. Color of the Claw. Okay, so I'm just going to go Finhorn Elves here, and I'm just going to... I guess I, I get to do everything, do I? So I just play the Range Hermit, pass the turn, and then I just get to... If my opponent does have the Shard Phoenix, I still get to cast it. I still get to call Color of the Claw and make a bunch of tutus. So I think this is just great. I think I just get to do everything. So ship the turn back, we'll see what, what kind of Oath deck we're playing against. Okay, so it is a Terror Oath, milling. Two Swords to Plushers and a single Rift's Grove. So that's uh, that's good for us. I wonder if, if Pablo is actually playing my list here. He may be. I think I'm just going to bounce the Hermit here. Yeah, let's just bounce the Hermit. And then untap. And I think I'm just going to pay for Echo. Pay for Echo. We have enough mana. This is five mana. So I guess I get to play Acolyte first. So play Acolyte. Draw another land, which just doesn't do too much. Untap Priest, Bouncing Acolyte, then play a land. I guess I get to replay Acolyte. This will make one, two, three, four, five mana. Priest of Titania. Yeah, I'm just gonna make five here. Play Deranged Hermit, and I'll swing with everything. I guess I'm not gonna swing with the Symbiote. So swing with everything except Symbiote. And then probably just take it. I guess I play out the priest. Might as well. It's pretty much free. It's gonna oath again, and it's another terror Man, he's getting, he has gotten so unlucky. Oh my god! All three terror are one ones. This is kind of hilarious. So he hard cast the terror So he can, he can just hack cat cataclysm here and. I guess I still get to Calder of the Claw, so we're still fine, but this is really funny. That was pretty hilarious. All right, so I need those Naturalizes. Uh, I don't think this is a Natural Order matchup. Octavio Orangutan seems pretty good. Elvis Champion seems quite strong, actually. Masticore I don't like. 
Vigilante seems fine. Is Natural Order what I'm gonna do? I don't think so. Because Verdon Forge just gets bricked wall by Terrorvor, so I, I don't think this is the game plan. Tangle Wire is very interesting. I don't think it quite does what I want it to do. I do like Druid Lyrist. Natural Orders are gone, so I guess I'm gonna cut the Wall of Roots as well. Genesis is interesting, though I'm not sure. And I think I'm gonna cut an Acolyte? No. I do like all of these. Although I guess he's not that likely to have access to, to a basic forest in play. I do have to beat Cataclysm. The need to beat Cataclysm is definitely a hit towards Tanglewire. This is potentially a card I'm interested in, actually, if my goal is to beat Cata the Cataclysm angle. I do think that this is probably going to be much better on the play than on the draw, though. What do I cut? What do I cut? Kamal is really interesting. Kamal is a great way to play around Cataclysm, because I can force my opponent to, like, blow up all of their own lands. Well, that's, that's actually not true. Yeah, that's actually not true, because they can just choose to keep a different creature. So never mind. I do like Priest. I think I'm gonna cut a Lanawar. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut a Lanawar. Maybe I should be cutting Kamal. Yep, uh, this draw seems pretty good. We already have the Anger, which is nice. So we're just gonna go land, pass. That's an Elvis Champion, which doesn't really do that much. At least not yet. Rush land. This is an Oath that is Cursed Odin. Okay, that's, that one's kind of pretty sure. I'm still gonna play out the Priest because it's a two mana creature. I still think that I can activate Vigilante's ability under a Curse Totem. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's the case. So far, it looks like, like Pablo may be playing my list. Okay, that's a uh, Terror So let's go play a land, and I'm not gonna expose the Cradle into the Wasteland. I think that we can wait for that. Is it better for me to activate? Yeah, I'm just gonna play out Survival, because I can just hook Tabby here. I, I, what I don't want to happen is I play survival and it gets it just gets killed before I even get an activation. So here I can use survival, pitch anger, and I can just go find Uktabi to blow up the curse totem. Here we're gonna be taking two, which is fine. No blocks. Pass the turn. Survival, pitch anger. Go find Uktabi orangutan. Untap. I do have to be very mindful of when I play this Cradle because this Wasteland is going to kind of blow me out, so... Source of Plowshares in response. Brutal. All right, so here's an Octavi, Cursed Totem, and I'm just going to pass the turn back here. He actually can't attack unless he has one of the Cycling Lands. Another Cursed Totem is quite brutal. That kind of blows me out a little bit. We'll see if he wants to block here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna block. He can just sack the wasteland to itself, or he can. If he has cycling lands, I get super blown out. But okay, so he blew out his own land, though. So this is good. Because now I get to deploy my cradle and I have a bunch of mana, which is very nice. He also blew out his own land, so that was a very nice bait there. So we're going to go. Here's a Finhorn Elves, another Finhorn Elves, play cradle, play Granger, and I'm gonna get a mountain. And now we're going to swing for four, I guess. Time to raise, baby. I'm not playing Echo for the Granger. Oh, that's brutal. Second Wasteland is devastating. Okay, so that is that is a really big deal. Sphere of Resistance also. Gross. All right, so we are racing here. So we're not going to pay Echo. And so now I get to play Elvis Champion. Man, that Sphere is really good. So I can play Elvis Champion and I can swing for four. Or I can... Playing Antuco Vigilante face down, which will allow me to blow up the Cursed Totem next turn, which unlocks Thinhorn Elves. This is a swing for six if I play Elvis Champion. So I swing for six next turn. Oh man. If I play Vigilante now, we swing for four. Next turn, I spend two mana to untap and blow out Cursed Totem. Then I have one, two, three, four mana up. But I also have the Vigilante to block the Terravor, which is pretty nice. Is that good enough? Is that better than... So I'm trying to figure out whether... I think I'm not going to be able to race. So I can swing for 6 here. He goes down to 9. Then next turn I have 6 power. And I guess technically I can just go get the ETB draw a card. Yeah, okay. So I think I'm just going to race here. So swing for 6. Goes to 9. And he's not going to be able to play a second threat. 
So his only answer is a plow, which will buy me another turn because the Terror is a 6-6. Six, six, so I think it's better to do this. Next turn, I pitch Hermit to go get the 2-1 guy. Okay, so he does attack. Yep. Okay, so survival, pitch Hermit, and we go get Montani's Acolyte. One, two, three, play Acolyte. So again, he can have source to plowshares, but if he does, that is fine. And I'm not going to play the fetch land there because... All right, we just raised him back. Woo! All right. I guess we, we got these playoffs, baby. We got these playoffs. Feels good. All right, everybody. We got there. We won the playoffs. And the deck just continues to impress me. Uh, I think this deck is very, very strong. There's something about the ability that it has to pivot from like going aggro to like playing a long game this is just the best survival deck i think that is just a fair thing to say it can really make absurd amounts of mana and then just it just can take advantage of this card like no other deck in the format i don't think no other deck in any format ever honestly i think this th this deck is just very very good i think the natural order package just continues to prove itself uh, to, to be very strong. It's pretty funny how one of the things that it does is one of the matches that we played in these playoffs was actually against Landstill where it was kind of a Hail Mary. But one thing the Natural Order did is allow us to get a pretty incredible board presence out of a very, very small base, right? So I was in a situation where... I could cast the Natural Order, and sure, my opponent could have countered it, or they could have done a variety of different things, but the fact that I had access to Natural Order, which was a 4-mana Verdant Force, meant that I could cast the Natural Order off of 3 lands and a single creature. I think it was like 2 lands and 2 creatures, I can't remember. From a very small base, I was able to like put a Verdant Force, and then just the Verdant Force itself just took over. Sure, I got very lucky, because my opponent never found a, a, a Humility, or ne and never found a Source to Plowshares, so uh, that could have certainly backfired, and I wouldn't have won this event, but... It didn't, and it actually gave me a chance to win an otherwise unwinnable game. Like, from a single card in hand, because the Natural Order was literally my very last card. From a single card in hand and only four permanents, I was able to win the game. And that is pretty crazy, even though it can be a little bit fragile. But I'm still interested in finding out what the Goblins in Sly matchup really feel like, because I have not really experienced those just yet. I keep hearing that Goblins is kind of just un un unwinnable. When I played this deck in paper once, because Mike lent me the deck, I got paired against Goblins and I beat it, because both games I was able to resolve a very quick Masticore. So I do wonder whether this deck may want to just cyborg extra ma Masticores. I have to say that the Wall of Roots angle is very good. So I do wonder whether there's a way to maybe uh, have a second Mastic on the cyborg and maybe like a Wall of Blossoms, maybe more Wall of Roots. Uh, I don't know what the combination is. And I'm interesting to, interested to find out because uh, this deck is really doing it for me right now. I, I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure out. I feel like an idiot as I'm playing it, which is something that is always I always find very, very exciting when playing a deck in basically any format, like in Magic in general. I'm really, really stoked about this one. Looking forward to continue learning it and hopefully continue winning with it. And winning with a little bit more confidence, right? Right now I feel like I'm kind of stumbling into, into wins or like getting lucky on my way there. But uh, I do feel like I want to get to a point where I'm just confident in my in my skill playing this deck. Like the great Elves players that, that exist in the, in the promoter format right now out there. Out there. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. And I'll see you in the next one, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.